Hey guys, today I'm testing an updated version for the Shanling M6 that has a 21 nickname in it. I'm not sure if they're putting on repeat tracks like uh, 21 by Frank Zappa or by uh, the Cranberries, or maybe there are huge cinephiles watching uh, 21 Jump Street or 21 Grams once in a while that we will never know. But we all know that AKM's factory fire affected this industry in a very bad way. So much so that uh, plenty of uh, DAP manufacturers, DAC manufacturers, moved to some different chip makers, and of course, Shanling is one of them. The newest M6 is now using ESA Sabre chipsets. It goes for 569 bucks, and it's time to check it out. Design-wise, it looks very much the same to its twin brother M6, with just a single change that differentiates it, a gold-painted volume wheel instead of a matte black one. I find it as handsome looking and it follows the same design language to the rest of its family. It rocks only three buttons and a single volume wheel that can work as an on-off button. I mean, it can be much simpler than this. You have your play, pause, next and previous buttons, three headphone jacks, a volume wheel, and that's it. Shanling moved all its inputs and outputs to the bottom for a clean, unspoiled look. From left to right, there's your USB Type-C, your normal headphone jack, followed by two balanced outputs coming in 2.5 and 4.4 mm flavors. It uses a medium-sized 4.7 inch 720p IPS display that is bright, offering good viewing angles. It's enough for light web browsing and for music streaming, using third-party apps as Kobus, Tidal, Spotify, and others. As for the tech inside, it rocks the same Snapdragon 430, which currently powers all their dApps, including their flagship units. It supports Google Play Store, so you can install all your apps. It uses two ES9038 Q2M DAC chips that are working in a dual mono configuration, achieving an outstanding dynamic range of 126 dB on its balanced outputs. This is a higher performing chip compared to the former AK4495 in every aspect, starting with noise rejection and distortion and finishing with dynamic range. Shanling went with different op-amps this time around, balancing the neutral sounding ESS chipset. Two OPA2211 are working as low pass filters, followed by the same AD op amps in the final amplifier stage. Power output increased quite a lot, up to 570 milliwatts in 32 ohms on its balanced outputs and to 190 milliwatts on its regular jack. Shanling also added a full MQA decoder and this is pretty much it. Pretty cool specs, right? But let's check how it actually performs. Sound-wise, I was just a little bit concerned that those ESS Sabre DAX would be toning down sweetness and uh, all that warmth, all that uh, mid-range presence, but luckily that wasn't really the case, as Shanling added some warmer sounding OPAs, uh, and of course the best-in-class capacitors money could buy, and all that just counterbalanced all the issues of the ESS Sabre DAX by adding some warmth in the mid-range and some smoothness in the top octave. Personally, if I would never check its uh, spec sheet, I would never guess that it has uh, double ESS Sabre DAX inside. With the newest M6, I felt a faster tempo and some added weight in the bass, uh, while retaining basically the same mid-range performance of its predecessor, and also while providing an additional layer of information. So the newest M6 is slightly more detailed sounding, slightly more cleaner sounding, like uh, the final veil is being lifted, and I can easier feel all those changes in micro dynamics, micro details. I've tried some uh, treble oriented headphones like uh, Hebe Crystal 6, like Fire FH7 and FH5, and after about two hours of non-stop listening, uh, I never experienced brightness or listening fatigue after two days of burning, and that was uh, just amazing to experience. While its predecessor was uh, doing an okay job with uh, some planar magnetic headphones, the newest one with a huge increase of power, 
about 60% increase in, uh, of power on its balanced out, worked much, much better with something like Kenerton Wodan, SFH Phobos, even Hyphaman HE1000 SE worked uh, really nicely with this one, something that its predecessor could never do. Version 21 is far from being lean or boring sounding, and I'm glad that Xianling's DNA is still flowing through its circuit board. Xianling isn't mentioning an exact noise floor on its newest DAP, so I'll need to test that myself the hard way with the most uh, sensitive IMs that I have at my disposal. So I'll tell you right away that uh, its noise rejection is nothing short of spectacular. And all the newest Xianling DAPs as M3X and M8 are performing pretty much the same. I went directly on its 4.4 mm jack uh, on high gain just to hear how very loud the sound of silence. So this is really an outstanding engineering as no matter the selected gain, no matter the headphone jack, no matter the volume level, M6 was just simply noiseless with everything that I have at my disposal. So there is no need to mention all those headphones and IMs. It was just noiseless with all of them. At first, I thought that it's maybe a softer trick. So I tried some third party apps like Kobus and Tidal. And sure enough, M6 was inaudible as far as noise goes. It felt like it was turned off completely and you really can have a better noise rejection than this. In terms of power output, 570 milliwatts of power on its balanced outputs and high gain is plenty of power for audio dynamic headphones and should be enough even for several planar magnetic ones. So as you can expect, all my portable over ears, all my IMs, all my desktop dynamic headphones were fully driven. So I had just an amazing authority in the bass, a very good control in the bass a faster tempo, a fast decay, so I had all the signs that all those headphones are fully driven. Moving on to planar magnetics, that's more interesting. Kenerton Odan and Erzetich Phobos at around uh, 70 out of 100 were already very, very loud. So again, I had an amazing control in the bass, a huge headroom remained on top. Surprisingly, even Hyphaman HE1000 SE worked decently at around 80 to 85 on that volume wheel. Uh, fully preserving their faster tempo and providing a pretty good uh, driver control. Only Odyssey LCD4 at around 95 to full power didn't work that well. And a lack of current said its last word as this weren't sounding as engaging and toy tapping as I know them to be. But this is a mid-range DAP and such behavior should be expected. In terms of sound stage, it's really simple. If your headphones are fully driven, then those Elna and Panasonic caps will be doing a masterful job, making sure that all your headphones will never sound dual, uh, up front or crowded. The ones that were fully driven sounded like they were connected to an entry to mid-level desktop headphone amplifier. So there was plenty of air traveling around, there was punch in the bass, there were layers and sub-layers of sounds. Bass notes were bringing just a little bit more air, uh, expanding the sound stage and making sure that everything is just layered and really detached sounding. M6 has a much better uh, channel crosstalk on its balanced outputs and if you want your music just uh, taller, wider and deeper sounding, just use only its balanced outputs. Shining are one of the few DAP manufacturers that have lots of experience with analog amplifiers and they used all that knowledge while crafting their M6, and it really shows while listening to it. As far as transients go, immediately after unboxing it, I started listening to it. And honestly, I wasn't that impressed in the first hours or so, so it wasn't that engaging, it wasn't that fun. Uh, it was quite restrained in terms of dynamics, it was quite small sounding, and bass impact wasn't that impressive, it was missing in action. So I let it play for around two days on the repeat. I came back and unsurprisingly it was much better in the bass. All that energy came back. Uh, it just made an appearance in my tracks. Uh, dynamics improved quite a lot and all that frequency response just felt uh, that is being covered in full. So I had everything including sub bass, mid bass and all that treble energy just toned down a bit. So it packed just a nicer punch in the bass while being exactly as transparent as it was one day ago. 
I wouldn't say that it fully dominated the low end, the base, as its bigger brother M8 did, but uh, I think that it was pretty close, throwing some decent punches when faster music started playing. If you add some energizing music into its daily diet and put some impactful headphones on your head, then suddenly it will sustain some longer bass notes and deliver faster decays. In terms of detail retrieval and transparency, the newest M6 uh, is definitely a very honest sounding player. So it offers an extended and really linear frequency response. It can highlight all the musical notes at the same intensity, meaning that uh, focusing on anything, anything particular isn't really a mind game anymore. So all those small details came forward to play without any intervention from my part. The newest M6 is definitely uh, bringing forth a little bit more nuances from my music, so more micro details can be observed at lower uh, volumes compared to the older M6. If you don't care for the last drop of information from your tunes, if you are not listening to some reference recordings, then I think uh, there isn't that big of a difference compared to the former M6. But if you are listening to such, uh, such files, to such music, and you want everything from your music, then I think the newest M6 is much better at that. And it's much closer to that flagship uh, Shanling M8. What's more interesting is that in USB DAC mode, it will easily replace an entry to mid-level uh, USB DAC without losing too much in terms of technicalities. It's roughly on the same level with a SMSL SU9, topping D50 SE and Sonko's QX D1. Moving on to frequency response, the newest M6 renders the full beauty of the low end. So there is definitely a little bit of rumble in the bass, there is punch in the bass, but I believe that uh, it's more impressive when it comes to quantity rather than quality. So after two days of burning, uh, there will be a slightly more bass information compared to some pricier dubs like uh, Fire M11 Plus Limited, and that was really quite unexpected. Bass is clean, it's defined, it's undistorted, and at times it feels a little bit elevated, adding a little bit of character and uh, fun into the mix. It is a well-controlled type of bass that isn't breaking up at higher volumes, so I'm definitely experiencing a good quality type of bass. As far as mid-range goes, personally, I cannot differentiate the newest ESS Sabre equipped unit from the older AKM based unit and uh, there is simply as much uh, naturalness, as much smoothness, as much warmth as it is in the older unit and that is a very good news already. It's important to say that uh, Shanling tunes all their mid-range dubs like this one to have a reference tuning so they want to have just an honest presentation, a very linear presentation and that is really the case with both devices. While there is a little bit of warmth, there is a little bit of uh, smoothness in here, but it isn't as much as it is with, the, with that uh, Shining M8, so don't expect super velvety textures, that is not going to happen. Vocal performance was great, as even with all armature IMs, the human pitch was nicely preserved and there was plenty of refinement and smoothness. After powering it on, it was somewhat aggressive and uh, a little bit raw around the edges, especially when it comes to treble, but after two days of burning, all that feels like a long forgotten dream. So right now it is just clean, really extended, very defined, uh, it goes past top octave, no problem. If you love your trebles really clean and super defined, then I think that M6 would be just right up your alley. Listening fatigue is right now just gone, and I can listen to tambourines, to bells, and to snare drum hits all day long, no problem. With all that said, it isn't exactly a smooth sounding player, so there aren't any treble roll-offs, uh, just a flat treble response without a drop or rise. If you don't like your treble extended and detailed, you just might look elsewhere. I've also compared it with its predecessor M6, you can find all that below in my written review or somewhere around here. It's on chapter 9 and I believe it's worth checking out. As for my conclusions, version 21 proved itself as a worthy successor to the aging M6, seriously boosting its output power and marginally improving its technicalities. It has an outstanding build quality, a very good button layout and it, in my opinion it looks uh, pretty cool and very simple. Its neutral tuning with a mild bass boost works outstanding with all types of headphones, so be them bright, neutral, or warm sounding. It worked outstanding with sensitive IMs, and 
As much as I've tried, I couldn't spot a noise floor or even traces of it. It delivered a nicer impact with planar magnetics and it even added several headphones to its fully driven headphone list. Ok guys, my full in-depth review can be found on my website. In case you want to support this channel, please subscribe to it and as usual listen to my music. Be positive and I'll see you next time. Cheers! Bye bye!